Hi, and welcome to the bridge. This is a significant uh, time together because we're celebrating Pentecost Sunday. Not sure when you'll view this, but if it's in and around the 23rd of uh, this month of May, it's a special time because it's 50 days since Jesus uh, rose from the dead and uh, he was on the earth for 40 days, then he left and 10 days later, of course, the Holy Spirit came as promised by Jesus. And I want you to experience what Jesus wanted you to have, and that's the power of the Holy Spirit. Nancy and I have been praying for you, and we've got a power pack time. It's only about 25 minutes, and we would like you to, to hang with us and to watch it, review it, uh, let it minister to your heart, because it's not from us, but it's from Jesus. I'm going to end it with my own personal testimony. I would not be here. I would not have done what I've done for the last 40 years if it was not for the Holy Spirit meeting with me personally. And I'll share that at the end of the broadcast, mm -hmm. our time together. So Nancy, greet our friends and I'll pray and we'll get right into the text. And if you've never heard his testimony, stay with us because you're gonna enjoy it. So it's amazing. Well, greetings. I'm glad that you're here with us. And we're in Illinois, the land of Lincoln. <laughs> and um, so we're here and yep. it's gotten kind of windy and and it was sunny and beautiful. And now we start recording and it gets windy and it gets cloudy and, you know, <laughs> but that's okay. We're going to go with it. It'll get sunny before the broadcast time is over. Well, let's hope so. But there's a big <laughs> cloud over us <laughs> here. So, but I just want to welcome you and ask you to... Um, link in with us and you can see down below there you can see where our website is and you can see how you can you can uh, platform with us on different areas we are on youtube facebook instagram and now on the now Na television network and um, that's an app that you can download onto your smartphone or your tv if you have roku tv and you can add that channel and we would be happy for you to watch with us. If you're gonna watch on the NOW Network, it would be at Saturday night, 9 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 p.m. Central Time, and 12 p.m. or, well, I guess a.m., 12 a.m. on the Eastern Coast. So, you got it right. Ah, that's that's good, a lot. Man. That was a mouthful. So, <laughs> so wherever so, you live, tune in if you can. Yeah, so we would love to have you watch with us on that. Okay, so I'm going to read to you about Jesus promises the Holy Spirit, and that is from John chapter 14. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. And that is the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you will know him, for he lives in, within you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will Hallelujah. live. Hallelujah. On that day, you will realize that I am the Father and that you are in me and that I am in you. Whoever, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's, that's a great passage, and we're excited to hear about Pentecost, and we're excited to hear about your testimony. So take it away, dear. Okay. Thank you, Nancy. In that passage that Nancy read, it said that he would show himself to us. And in your hour of need, I can promise you that the Lord becomes more real when you need him than at any point in your life. And he promised he'd never leave us nor forsake us, but that he'd be with us to the very ends of the earth. So as we unpack this passage that Nancy read to you, uh, I'm gonna save the prayer time for the end because I'd like you to be able to be empowered with the help and the assistance of the Holy Spirit so there'll be an extended prayer time. 
He says here in this passage, if you love me, keep my commands. Well, those that do follow the teachings of Jesus position themselves to be in a place to receive. Now the Lord will bless us, forgive us, and his grace will come upon us in unmerited ways that are beyond words. But we still should strive to follow his ways and follow his example. The prophets foretold that he was going to come, but what it wasn't until he came and showed us how to live that the disciples then were able to be empowered with the Spirit and then, of course, change their world. And I, I really believe the world is at a point where the good news of Jesus is globalizing. We've got some demonic leaders in our world today. They are completely led by Satan. They're following the ways of the Antichrist. I don't need to name who they are. You know who they are. They are completely demon-possessed. And you won't know that until the Holy Spirit reveals to you what is going on in and around all the countries in the world. There's a battle that's raging. And so he says for his followers, if you love me, keep my commands. The second thing is that he will send an advocate. An advocate is somebody who advocates for you. If you go to the hospital, it's nice to have a friend, a family member, a doctor, somebody to advocate for you. Otherwise, they will just miss you and just overlook you. But you have to have somebody that'll step in and protect, just like a parent protects a child. You don't just drop your kid off. And let me just say that about even the public systems and the private systems and the, the professional systems of education are in the world today. Don't just drop your kid off. If you do that, you're setting them up to be misused, abused, and untrained, and not trained, and, and ill-equipped for life. So it's time for the parents to be involved. And I know that the government is just slowly, over the last three, four, five decades, has taken a lot of parental uh, responsibility, only because a lot of parents have advocated that. And notice that the truth is in the Holy Spirit. It isn't hard to know what God's doing when you ask him. God is not playing hide and go seek with us. He wants you to know what he knows if you'll ask him and walk in his ways. The world cannot accept the truth because the world is still under the bondage of the lies. Just like in World War II, on D-Day, we knew we were going to win the battle against Germany. But it wasn't until V-Day that we actually crushed and stopped Nazi Ger Germany, which was really a very demonic person. Uh, you know Hitler was a demonic person, and we have those kinds of leaders that are rising up, uh, even in our world today, that kill babies, that uh, don't care about older people, they lie through their teeth, they protect the people that give them money, and they misuse the middle class and the poor people, abuse those who are uh, uh, trying to love all races. They've come against the church. Uh, they've come against the body of Christ. And, and we see this. And these are some reasons we know that the coming of the Lord is soon. And, and notice here that he said he would never leave us as an orphan. You know, an orphan is somebody who nobody looks out for. Nobody watches over. And so the Holy Spirit now is the one that's going to look out for you. He's the one that's going to watch over you, and he's going to protect you physically, uh, emotionally, uh, relationally, financially. Uh, Jesus overcame even the power of uh, the food chain because he fed 5,000 on one occasion and 4,000 on another occasion. occasion. So uh, Jesus rose the dead. Remember the woman at Cain? Remember Lazarus? And of course, Jesus himself was raised from the dead. And he never died again. The others died again. But Jesus broke the power of death. So the need for the Holy Spirit to come and to be our overseer and our guide. Now, listen carefully because he comes at salvation into your heart. But it's not until this empowerment that comes on on the day of Pentecost, that, and you can experience that any day now, but it, when you receive this power from the Holy Spirit, 
you then have insight and you have love from him uh, you have discernment uh, you have uh, prophecy uh, you have uh, understanding that others just simply don't have now there are pseudo crazy emotional people and i'm not talking about them i'm talking about those that had their feet firmly in the word of god the banks of the river are led by the teachings of scripture but then they flow easily with the help of the holy spirit in the sense of application everybody say application see there's where sometimes we've missed it and that is that we have an understanding but we don't have the application God, show me how to run this ministry. Show me how to be a dad in this family. Show me how to be a parent in this family. Show me how to be a friend. Show me how to uh, conduct my business. Guide me in my business transactions. And as we, as we look at this passage of scripture, notice that he's telling us Jesus is in us at salvation, but he actually flows through us after we receive our prayer language, which is the ability to talk to God in a heavenly language that my cognitive mind doesn't understand. Now separate prayer language from prophecy and interpretation that's taught in Corinthians 14. The ability to pray in the spirit and worship in the spirit is for all believers. And before the end of this broadcast, this time together, I do want to pray for you to have that indwelling of the Spirit of the living God. So, continuing on here, keeping the commands of Jesus is part of waiting. And I really wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking to you about the reason you wait and the Spirit comes. They waited in the upper room until the Spirit came is God is often cleaning up our pride, cleaning up our hearts, putting Jesus first place, uh, making the word come alive, uh, humbling ourselves. And, and it's not like we're something above someone else. No, when I receive or you receive the Holy Spirit, it's a very humbling experience. To think that God's power, think of this, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead could actually flow through you and through me in prayer to God in a prayer language is just wonderful. It's just supernaturally blessed of the Lord. So as we look at this, the Spirit will show us the application of the truth. Sometimes we pray for people and they're healed. Sometimes we pray for people and they pass away. And how do we know the difference? Ask God the Holy Spirit. What is he up to? He's up to doing something that's beyond our immediate focus. He, God has the big view of life. He wants you and your household saved. So sometimes a strong believer will go through a difficult time and even pass away. And that causes the rest of us to sit up and take notice and say, hey, life is fragile. Handle with prayer. And so as we look at this, we then need to move from this passage in John, which is the gospel. And now go with me to the book of Acts, which is the bridge into the teachings of the apostle Paul, James, and John, and others. So I want you to see here that the reason we've named this ministry the bridge is that a lot of people experience the gospel and have Jesus in their heart and the Holy Spirit's within them, but he's not flowing out of them in prayer. They're not ministering. Peter tried to minister, and it wasn't until he received the endowment of power of the Holy Spirit that then when he spoke and gave a litany of the history, 3,000 people got saved. Because see, the Holy Spirit was already doing the work. And it's the Holy Spirit that's drawing people to himself. So go to Acts chapter 1, and we're going to be at verse 8 now, and then we're going to be in chapter 2 in just a moment. But in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. So when we receive this wonderful indwelling of the Spirit, it's so that we can witness. 
and share and minister, not hurt and destroy, but heal and build up. Encourage, does it encourage? Does it edify? Does, does it build up? People that hammer others with their ideas or hammer others even in an unloving way with scripture is not biblical. But we still need the power of conviction, which is the job of the Holy Spirit. And he's convicting you and me right now. He's convicting every nation in the world. He's drawing us into a place of making a decision. So what is the reason for this endowment of power from the Holy Spirit? Is power to witness. And we start out witnessing close to us in our own town, our own community of, of people. And then, of course, the area or region around. And then, of course, then the countries near us and into the uttermost parts of the world. I'm in that season of life now that as I, as a young man, ministered to the youth group and ministered to my own community of believers in the church. And then as I pastored a church, we then ministered to the people in the community. And I was pastoring the pastors in Hemet and uh, still have great uh, honor of ministering to other pastors and ministers in the Hemet, the Riverside area and SoCal. Uh, been a part of the Southern Cal District uh, network for a long time. And now I'm influencing Kansas and, and Missouri and some other uh, great districts, as well as the General Council that will meet this summer in Florida. And you can see I have my Assemblies of God t-shirt on. I believe in what they're doing. Not perfect. But, but what I like about it is that we can change. We have great leaders at times, and sometimes we don't have such great leaders. And we have to ask the Lord to help us. And we then pray and seek the Lord. And then God brings the right leaders in as a local pastor or a district official or a, 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 a national official or a missionary. And so notice that that's the plan, to, to go close and then nearby and then state in the next country. And now the Lord has opened up 68 countries of the world and got another invitation today to preach on Saturday in another country. And uh, I can do this now via this uh, wonderful uh, technology. I can do as I'm doing with you. And I, I hope that you will pray for us and ask God to help use us as we do this latter part, the uttermost parts of the world. Let me uh, conclude our time together by looking at Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came and rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them them. So now is the time in which the Holy Spirit is come upon the early church and has been empowering the church since the day of Pentecost. Now we've had a refreshing visit in the early 1900s. Uh, there are other times in which the moving of the Spirit, we had great tent revivals in California in the 50s. We had the Jesus movement of the 60s. We had a mass exodus out of dead mainline churches in the 70s that came into the fullness of the Spirit. Uh, we had the outreach to the world in the 90s and 2000s. And here we are on the precipice in 2021 of taking this good news of who Jesus is to the entire globe. How could that have ever been known? And we wondered about that. And historians have written about that. How can everybody know there's earthquakes in various places in Japan or, or California or, or even in Missouri uh, and uh, in other parts of the world? It's because now with technology, uh, we can watch stuff in real time. And we're approaching that time in which God is going to, to correct the whole world. And the Holy Spirit is convicting what you feel right now, that uncomfortableness. You want to turn the channel, that nervousness. Don't, don't do that. Surrender to Jesus. Stay close to Jesus. You see, Pen Pentateuch is five. And what Jesus is doing here with sending the Holy Spirit confirms what Moses had promised in the Pentateuch. 
that there would be one that would be greater. That's what the whole book of Hebrews is about. Jesus is greater than Melchizedek, the great prophet of old. He's greater than Moses, and that's saying something, isn't it? Jesus is greater than the angels. And so it's a move forward in the things of the Spirit. Now, notice a couple of things about this group. They're all together. They're in one place. And then it's like the sound of a violent wind. It's not saying it's wind. He's trying to describe a spiritual event in a way that would be understood. It's this movement. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that's moving to fix things in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul. I've seen people receive this wonderful gift of the Spirit and change in five to 15 minutes. You might have to go to some church and sit under good Bible teaching for 15 or 20 years in order to have downloaded into your spirit and mind what God the Holy Spirit can do in five to 15 minutes. Just surrender. Let him give you what you need, not what I think you ought to have, not what somebody else thinks, not even what you think you ought to have. Ask the Holy Spirit, say, you know me. Some of you need to be, you know, kind of, all right, get up and get going again. Some of you have been so beat up, you need to be loved and nurtured. Uh, there's a lot of different things that have happened to a lot of different ways, and not any one thing can, or one thought, can satisfy everybody. It's going to take the help of the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher and our guide. And notice that it was like tongues of fire. That means that there was a purification. And, you know, James, the half-brother of the Lord, said, if you can tame the tongue, if you can handle that, you can control the rest of the body. And I'm asking you, let your tongue be filled with the praise of the Lord and the gift of tongues and the spirit of prayer. And watch how the world and the things that have been done to you and stuff we've done to others that is heavy on our subconscious and conscious mind will roll off like water on a duck's back. You know, I want to be kind here, but some churches don't have enough power to blow the powder off of a peanut. The, you know, I just, I hate to say that, but go to a church where they have the moving of the Holy Spirit. It's like going to battle without ammunition. You got all the gun, you got all the training, you got all the technique and the skill, but if you don't have the bullets, what can I say? If you don't have the offensive word of God to go and do what needs to be done. But notice it says, and they were all filled with this enabling power of the Holy Spirit. I told you I would conclude my time together with you today on Pentecost. And there's a big reason. It was 50 years ago. It was May 23rd, 1971, that my brother and myself were in a very serious automobile accident on a street in Costa Mesa where either the tire blew out or something happened to the steering, but the truck lunged off the road and into a eucalyptus tree. And of course it was a 63 Ford 150 and there was no seat belt. And I went through the windshield, uh, my face and the battery and the headlight came together and crushed my nose and cheekbones. You can still see some of the effects and scars of that. But as I lay there on the ground, because the, the truck was steaming, I was scared. I cut my arm trying to go out the back window. My brother finally drug me through the, the driver's side window and I held on to the mirror. My right leg was broken at the femur and they, my brother laid me down on the ground and I'm at this point bleeding profusely. I hit a main artery right here in my cheekbone, uh, my mouth and, and all that was all broke and crushed in and uh, I was scared. And I remember reaching up toward the Lord and saying, Lord, I need you now. And you know, Jesus met me there on the pavement of that road in Costa Mesa 50 years ago. And he took a hold of my hand. 
I remember awakening a little bit off and on. I lost a lot of blood. But I remember awakening in the ambulance and then in the hospital. In fact, during this surgery, they didn't know if I had had some concussion, so they didn't want to put me out in general anesthesia. And I remember kind of coming and going from the surgery, then they were reconstructing my nose. I knew I was in trouble when the uh, doctor asked my mom to bring a picture of what I used to look like. So as, uh, as I'm laying there, uh, I, I begin to pray. And one of the doctors stepped back and said, is God gonna do this or, or am I gonna fix your face? And I said, God's gonna use your hands to fix my face. Hey, how do you do? <laughs> Anyways, I just want you to know that I then got the physical healing, but I wasn't ready for what was about to happen to me emotionally. They had to put me in traction because I was still growing. I was uh, almost 15 years old, and they didn't want to put a pin in and stop the bone growth. Uh, so they put me in traction, and as I laid there, uh, I began to get depressed and I wanted to cut these ropes off and drag myself outside. I would wake up in the morning in tears and depression. And I remember leaning back on the bed and said, God, I can't do this without the help of the Holy Spirit. And I began to pray in my prayer language. And you know, that whole thing lifted. And I asked my mom to get pictures of the truck and a poster board and put it on the wall in my uh, room there at Hogue Hospital in Newport Beach. And every person who came in my room, whether they worked for the hospital, friends, family, or whoever, I shared with them about what Jesus had done for me. And Jesus can do that for you today. He wants to fill you with his power. He wants you to be able to, in your moment of crisis, and I pray you don't end up in the front of a car accident. I pray you don't go through depression. But let me say something. You're going to go through something. I don't know what it's gonna be, but you're gonna go through something. And can I pray for you to receive this wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit so that you can be a witness. See, if I'd have just collapsed and fell apart, I probably would have died or done like the kid next to me. He, his girlfriend was bringing pot to him to smoke to ease the pain. You know what I'm drunk on? I'm drunk on the new wine. I'm drunk daily on the new wine. And I want God's presence to come to you. I'm not any more special than anybody else. You know what I am? I'm dumb enough to believe that Jesus is who he said he is. I need more of him today in my life than I ever have. And I want you to have what Jesus has for you. Would you pray this prayer? Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I'm going to wait for you to come and fill me with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to let you baptize me and let me talk to you in my spiritual prayer language that while my feet are on the earth, thy will can be done on earth as it is in heaven. I pray for that discernment and receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Thanks for watching Pentecost Sunday. See you next time. Thank you for joining us today on The Bridge. Please check out our website at www.thebridgeministry.online. Also, like us on your favorite social media platform. And if you're on YouTube, be sure and like and subscribe. Thank you and have a great week.